This video is going to cover how to cheese every boss in the game, with unique and specific strategies for most of them. Check the timestamps in the description if you're looking for a particular boss. Also, some bosses are more cheesable than others, so not all cheeses are created equal. For the vast majority of these cheeses, I am going to be using no armor accessories or potions and an unreforged weapon. I'm going to start this with my favorite cheese, Queen Bee. You could magic conch to the ocean and recall back to a bed in the jungle repeatedly, and since Queen Bee won't despawn, you can do this indefinitely and keep healing, but that's not quite cheesy enough. This takes advantage of Queen Bee being the only boss in the game capable of damaging and being damaged by other enemies. As long as A B is alive, Queen Bee will finally fire other enemies. So, you want to bring a beehive to place, craft it at a graveyard and a heavy workbench out of hive, or find a way to trap a natural bee spawn. You'll also want to bring the highest damaging statues you can find. Mimic, Unicorn, and Medusa are the ideal ones because they're hard mode enemies that don't go through blocks. You'll need to spawn a bunch of enemies from the statues, you can either find natural wiring by holding a pressure plate out, or you can build it yourself post Skeletron. Spawn as many as you can, leading them off to the side so more of them can spawn. Then go directly horizontal to them and summon Queen Bee. She will immediately charge directly into them and very quickly die. King Slime's teleporting has been updated to try and make him harder to cheese, and this strategy does require a small amount of effort on your part as a result. You need to occasionally walk left and right. If you hammer a row of blocks directly above you like so, King Slime will teleport on top of those instead of on top of you, until he reaches about 60% HP, in which case he will teleport on top of you and then immediately get kicked out and go above you. That's because of his size changing. When he reaches this point, you have to walk a little to the side every time he teleports. You want the platform you walk on to be at least 22 blocks in the air so he can't jump and reach you. And that alone is enough, but a bucket of lava below you and a decent and Bo makes quick work of him. All you have to do is make sure that you look for when he teleports and you walk a little to the side when he does. The Eye of Cthulhu is a very lackluster cheese. You just make a minecart track and ride horizontally, bump with the edges so you bounce back and keep shooting behind you. You can easily outrun it in any phase and you just keep riding in one direction. There's nothing too special here. You can also run on the ground, but enemies might spawn in front of you and it's hard to get enough speed as easily. Now, the brain is when things get back to being fun. Go up into the air and make a setup exactly like this, a square with a quarter of it missing with nothing nearby. This square is 30 by 30 with a 15 by 14 gap because I can't count. Collect some dungeon bricks from the dungeon, you can break them on the surface with any pickaxe and make a U-shape beneath it 30 blocks down with a rope leading upwards. Take a bunch of sticky dynamite and throw it beneath you, leaving some of it trailing upwards on the U-shape as you climb up the rope. Then stand at the center of the crimstone square. Summon the brain and try to time it just as the dynamite explodes. The second dynamite works best for this in my experience. Listen for the first explosion and summon him right before the second. The dynamite will instantly kill all of the creepers if you do this perfectly, and most of them if you don't, then the subsequent dynamite will kill more of them and any remaining ones will be easy to kill as they are extremely predictable. And then, do not move from the center of this square. As long as you are standing right here, the brain will always teleport to the top left. In phase two, you can simply keep attacking it constantly in one spot with any weapon that deals enough knockback to stun lock it. The mini shark, the rotted fork, the amazon, the blade of grass, and ice boomerang, there are plenty of options. If you're in for the worthy or get fixed boy, you'll just have to build this upside down, but it'll still be extremely easy to kill. The simplest cheese I could find for the Edo was pretty similar. Make a platform in the air with 300 ebonstone nearby and summon him above a flat area, and then he just can't reach you. He won't shoot at you either if there's only a small gap between you and him. You just stay above him and shoot downward. I am currently 35 blocks up from the ground, and he's completely unable to reach me. I was aware of a cheese from Mappy Gaming for Deerclops, but I wanted to come up with something better. Their cheese required a lot of defense to tank Shadow Hands, something that I wanted to avoid to make the cheese easily doable pre-boss. And so, Deerclops is the first showcase of the most broken weapon in the game, the Flare Gun. I love this thing, it is my baby, I have beaten the entire game with it, and by firing a thousand flares you can reach the projectile cap and prevent more projectiles from being spawned, enemy or friendly, for a brief time. Since 1.4.4 added auto use to all items, that makes this much less annoying to achieve. You enter a minecart track with bumpers to bounce you back and forth on both sides, make sure you're not using a wooden mine and you have one equipped, and that you enter the minecart before you shoot a thousand flares, otherwise you won't be able to get in. Get to full speed, 66 miles per hour, and then summon Deerclops. He'll walk towards you and die from the minecart ramming into him. All it takes is a flare gun, a merchant, and a minecart. You don't need armor, accessories, HP, or weapons. Let's go to the bone zone now. Skeletron cheese involves a minecart loop. The exact dimensions are 35 rails horizontal on the bottom, 38 diagonally up to the left, 7 on the left edge, 27 diagonally up, no ending so you fly off, and then a 27 rail landing strip and 34 linking back up to the bottom. The minecart track should be connected so that you can constantly ride it in a loop, bouncing off the left and right extensions. Use a hammer to change the type of edge that a minecart rail has. The size isn't super specific, this is just one of many that works. A bottom track connecting to where the old man is lets you summon Skeletron as you ride, then you bounce off the rail here and jump on the loop. If you do this correctly, Skeletron will be almost completely unable to hit you, only some very rare collisions with his hands will be able to touch you. However, you do need to actually kill him, so I suggest you use a bee gun and or a bee's knees with appropriate damage buffs. Something with homing, because aiming is very difficult here. With no damage buffs, no armor, and only a hive pack to boost them, it took about seven and a half minutes to kill Skeletron on master mode. Last up in pre hard mode is the Wall of Flesh. Consider this, you have a giant enemy with three damageable segments that will always follow the same predictable path throughout the world. How can you deal with that? 
Well, if you've killed Skeletron and unlocked wiring, think about it. Explosives! Set up a series of dungeon brick pillars with explosives on top of them wired up to pressure plate several pillars forward. The explosive should be the 11th block in the air and spaced at least 11 blocks apart since they have a radius of 10 blocks. Then attack towards the wall with a melee weapon to knock back the hungries and just run away. Time your pressure plate steps with the moment it crosses over the correct pillar and the wall will get destroyed. This isn't even an optimal setup. If you lower the ceiling, all three of the wall segments will get hit. Only two of them are getting hit here for the most part. The only equipped gear I have is a pair of boots and the pillars block lasers while the sword keeps the hungry at bay, and the wall of flesh just gets melted. A good cheese strategy for Queen Slime, in my opinion, is one that should be able to be done by a summoner with pre-mech gear, and that's exactly what I came up with. Queen Slime follows the same teleport logic as King Slime, and the hammered blocks work on her as well, but her size never changes, so you don't have to worry about her reaching you like with King Slime. A hoik strip upwards will send her flying up, meaning that'll be out of her range when she does her slam. You want the top of the strip closed off to stop being shot by the slimes that she spawns, and you don't want any gaps in the strip to avoid her spawning slimes in there. You should leave an opening for you to attack out of, though. A Klingo Staff will auto-kill her with no input on your end, so that's what I used. A summoner would mostly just summon spiders and whip her. You can also attack her if you want to jiggle her manually. However, this only works for phase 1 because she goes through blocks in phase 2 and her slam hitbox is very large. To avoid that, I'm abusing the iframes from a statue enemy. With 30 defense and a banner, a goblin scout will hit for 1 damage on master mode and queen slime will never hit you with her slam. As a summoner, all that requires is spider armor and iron skin potion and a food buff. The heart statues are not necessary here at all, you can just drink a potion or have some HP regen buffs to stop yourself from dying. You can see the exact dimension to this here. A 5 block tall, 8 block wide square above you, 18 blocks from the hammered blocks to the top, and 9 blocks for opening vertically before closing it off. The Destroyer is one of the most famously cheesable bosses, and there are many ways to do it. You can very quickly kill him by attacking his coil right when he spawns like this, but that requires a lot of damage buffs to be consistent in my experience. Setting off an explosive can easily take out a massive chunk of his health if you can predict where he's going to spawn from. You can also make a box in the air that he can't reach, but that's kind of boring. This strategy is an extremely consistent kill that requires only a star cannon and a magic conch. Summon the Destroyer and conch to the ocean, and then go up into the air. I have NPCs here to stop Hopis and Wyverns from spawning. You'll need to clear out any obstacles like floating islands or trees ahead of time, then open your mini-map, but do not move it around. Keep yourself centered and zoom in and out only. Aim your cursor at exactly where the destroyer is coming from, close the map, and shoot. He will fly in a straight line directly at you until he gets close and he'll line himself up so that every single star hits all of his segments. With no damage buffs at all, I find zooming out four times and shooting once the destroyer appears on the edge of the map from the left is enough, and it takes about 140 stars. Remember, this is with no ammo reservation or damage boosts. Conversely, with a bunch of damage buffs, ammo reservation buffs, and a super star shooter, it takes about 25 stars, and several of those stars were going to waste. This is how I killed the destroyer in 1 HP hardcore and in the blindfolded no-hit stuff, and I like it quite a lot. Beware that this won't work in For the Worthy because the Destroyer will reflect falling stars. Skeletron Prime is just a big metallic Skeletron, and the same strategy works on him too. A big minecart loop. I would highly recommend you bring a lot of damage boosts to this fight, because much like Skeletron, he isn't very easy to hit like this. A Mega Shark with no damage boosts and Icor bullets took 8.5 minutes to kill him, and he hit me twice. With some mediocre damage boosts, Frost Armor, a Wrath Potion, and a Medium Well Fed, a Decent Reforge, an Emblem, and one Shark Tooth Necklace, that time went down to 3 minutes, and he didn't hit me once. The exact dimensions of this minecart loop are 74 tracks on the bottom, 36 diagonally upwards, 11 on the left side with a bumper to bounce you back, 36 diagonally upwards, hammer the ending so you fly off, then go back onto the bottom right, 1 block over and 5 blocks up, 32 diagonally up to the right, and 15 on the landing ship to the right with a bumper to bounce you back. The twins are very easily cheesed with an array of six teleporters. I link them up so that the bottom right one connects to the top left, which goes to the bottom center, to the top right, to bottom left, to top middle, to bottom right, and then the cycle loops. You should focus down Retinazer first with a weapon that goes through blocks like a Stormbow, and you just teleport whenever they dash to avoid them. You'll need to teleport pretty frequently for Spazotism's second phase, so keep an eye out there. The exact spacing isn't too important, and you can make these further apart to make teleporting away from phase 2 Spazotism easier. Now, on to Plantera, who was very tricky to figure out, the hardest boss for me to find a cheese for, in fact. To do this, I'm going to be using two separate exploits. The first is hitting the NPC spawn limit. Much like projectiles, the game has a built-in limit to how many NPCs can be spawned, and if you reach it, the game starts to break in pretty fun ways. If you hit 199 NPCs spawned in your world and then spawn Plantera, she will have no hooks and be unable to move. She also won't spawn tendrils in phase 2. There are a few ways to accomplish this, but this is the one I prefer. I placed 100 target dummies down and then broke beehives until the bees occupied the rest of the spawn slots. Then I broke a single target dummy to free up a slot for Plantera, and spawned her. And here she is. Unfortunately, that's not enough. She will still shoot you, and she counterattacks by shooting at you if you hit her through blocks. To stop that, we bust back out the flare gun and shoot a thousand flares to hit the projectile cap. Make sure you're out of her line of sight so she won't shoot you while you do it. Now she is completely helpless. She can't shoot at us, she can't move, she can't spawn tendrils, we can just walk up to her and melee her with a non-projectile weapon. I use the fetid bag next, although she did hit me once because I was trying to be fancy and get into a cool looking spot. You don't have to box her up and trap her, you can just walk up to her and kill her. 
This golem cheese has been aged for a decade, crafted with love from the finest milk I could find. You'll need to take golem out of the temple for this, and a hoik is ideal. To get in and out of the temple easily, you can use a hoik, a recall potion to a nearby bed, or a rod of discord, but the hoik is the least work. To hoik, do this. Put three blocks on the ground and put a platform on the third, a block on the second, and nothing on the first. Hammer the platform once in the block so that it looks like this, depending on which way you're going, then hammer every other block to look the same way. Hold down and just walk through the platform and you'll clip into the block and it'll send you through. Once golem is out, you'll need to make a wall of one-way platform hoiks to keep him at bay. To do that, make a wall and hammer them until they look like this if Golem is coming from the left and the other way if he's coming from the right, and then block swap them with platforms. He won't be able to move towards you because the platform will prevent his horizontal movement. Stand outside of the range of his fists and kill the one that attacks you first, and then once that dead, move up and kill the other one. Once both fists are dead, teleport to above him and start shooting downward. Use two teleporters linked up so that you can hold down one direction and keep running permanently with a pair of boots. All of Golem's lasers will miss you, and only the occasional fireball will be able to touch you. If you put a ceiling above you, the fireballs will be more likely to hit you in phase one, but the phase two ones won't be able to at all, and with no ceiling, the phase one fireballs are much less likely to hit you, but the phase two ones can. This is a pretty slow strategy, but you can easily kill Golem without taking damage like this. Duke Fishron is not an easy boss to cheese, but this strategy works very well. And in fact, it can be done pre-mech bosses. All you need are two teleporters, which are sold by the mechanic now, so they're pre-mech. Position them apart from each other and line the inside walls with platforms hammered once. This will let you shoot out from inside the box while blocking the shark runs from outside. Lastly, and this is important, put a wall of blocks between them. This wall of blocks is extremely important because it prevents the Cthulhu Nados in Phase 2 from spawning in a bad location. Then you just teleport as he gets close to you. Use Smart Coaster to auto-select the switch to activate the teleporter. We've reached the point where I'm no longer using no armor and accessories because it would just take forever. I did this in two different ways, once with an Uzi, Frost armor, and some basic damage boosts, and the other one with a Chain Gun and Trumite armor and other post plantera gear. I didn't take damage either time, and it took just under 14 minutes for the Uzi to kill him and 2 minutes for the Chain Gun. I experimented with a 3 teleporter setup, which was faster to kill him, but couldn't dodge as consistently. The exact spacing here doesn't matter too much, you can look at my position and do the math if you want to replicate it exactly. Shroomite armor is particularly good here because you get the stealth bonus. Obviously, you don't need to use these exact weapons, anything that attacks from a distance is fine. Be careful of the bubbles because those will go through blocks and hit you if you don't teleport away. Now for the love of my life again, the flare gun. This is the same cheese strategy that I made a video about a while ago, but it's even easier since 1.4.4 added auto use. I'm only going to be using summoner armor and accessories that you can buy or easily obtain for this. I'm going to be using tiki armor, a hercules beetle, and a pygmy necklace, and not spooky armor or any of the pumpkin moon stuff. My accessories are reforged to angry and menacing as well. Summon all of your minions first, and then fire a thousand flares, and sit back and watch your minions kill her. Do not move until you hear this sound, and she starts to dash, at which point you want to fall downward to dodge it and then fly back up. I did this with the kitty cat, the raven staff, and the deadly sphere, and they all worked very well. You'll have approximately 5 minutes to kill her before she can start attacking again. Make sure you put your cursor near your character when freeing the lace wing, and you have a non-projectile weapon to kill it with. If you want to do daytime empress, make sure you start early in the day since she will leave at 7.30pm. The lunatic cultist could be cheesed with a similar strategy, but I wanted to come up with something else for him. Most of his attacks can't go through blocks, so I put two teleporters spaced 86 blocks apart with walls on the side to block his phase 2 purple ball attack and a barrier 10 blocks up to block most of his other attacks. I'm using the flying dragon, but all you need is something that can go through blocks. All you need to do is teleport as soon as he does an attack that goes through blocks, and he only has two of them, the ice attack and the ancient light attack. His phase 1 cycle is fire ice lightning fire ice summon, so as soon as you see him do a fire attack, you know you need to teleport in a moment. Phase 2 gets a little weirder because he substitutes in attacks, but just stay on your toes. He will only ever appear above you or to the right if you haven't hit a clone yet, and you can use auto pause to identify the real one easily if you're struggling. Lastly, the Moon Lord Cheese is basically the same as the Emphasis of Light Cheese. Summon your minion, fire a thousand flares, and use the sigil. If you're concerned about time, use the sigil when you have about 25 flares left to fire since that takes a little under 12 seconds. Instead of falling down to dodge the Empress dashes, you just have to run sideways when the true eyes show up to dodge those. You should use the Stardust Dragon, and I'm still using the same setup as the Empress with the purchasable summoner gear. Killing him like this is a breeze. You can also do some iframing on his sockets, but that only really works well on master mode and decently on expert mode. His socket damage in phase 2 hits for 80 regardless of difficulty, meaning you can sit inside of it with high defense and take 1 damage a hit on higher difficulties because defense gets more effective while the socket damage doesn't scale. This only works once the true eyes of Cthulhu come out and is pretty much impossible to do on classic mode. And that's how you cheese every boss in Terraria. I had quite a lot of fun coming up with these, although some of them were very tough. Uh, looking at you, Plantera and Deerclops, the projectile cap exploit was the last resort, I didn't want to have to use that. But now, I can finally move on to editing other videos instead of just working on this. So, uh, what streams do I have up next to highlight? Oh. <laughs>